governors of northern states take the exact opposite of the decisions of their southern counterparts, reject power shift to the south and vast collection by states. An investigative report reveals culture of corruption and tribalism at the Nigeria Immigration Service. These, likely responsible for the shortage of passports, will be speaking with the investigative journalist David Hundain this morning. And the United Kingdom launches temporary work visas for truck drivers, farmers and poultry workers. Welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's a really good day today um, for most people around the world and we'll share more details about that um, on our top trending. Welcome again to The Breakfast. I am Anetta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbon. Welcome to the second uh, well, episode of the week, Tuesday morning. We hope that it goes as uh, smooth as uh, can possibly be. Mm. Good morning. Good morning. Um, while we'll wait for that good news regarding, you know, that global story I mentioned, let's start from home, Nigeria. Um, we know the stance Southern governors had, have taken regarding VAT collection and, you know, the open grazing laws and all of that. And um, we've been looking to the Northern governors to come together, have their own meeting and let us know what they think. Let's see if we're finding an alignment of voices regarding these issues. Um, so they met yesterday, the Northern Governors Forum met yesterday and uh, it was in Kaduna. And um, some of the outcomes of their decision was one, that they were against zoning to the south, which lots of people have been clamoring for. Uh, we have agitations from the indigenous people of Biafra, there are agitations um, from the, um, the, the south as well regarding um, Sunday Buho agitations for Yoruba Nation, Afenifer agitating as well, and people have been saying maybe zoning to the south would solve all of this. But the Northern Governors rejected this blatantly. Um, chairman of, of the forum and, go and Governor of Plateau State, Simon Along, issued a statement after the meeting. Let's re read that out for you. He said that um, the statement to zone power to the south is a contradiction to the provisions of Nigeria's constitution. He said that according to the constitution, Nigeria's elected president will score the majority of votes you know, in at least 25% of votes cast in two of three states of the Federation, and not that, you know, the president should be from a particular region. It's the president should be someone who wins the election, you know, with the majority of votes. I'm um, speaking also regarding the value added tax controversy. He said that that has been confused as state by the state government as sales tax. He also said that if states enact their own VAT laws, multiple taxation will result and there will be increase in prices of goods and services and there will be collapse in interstate trade. Um, Simon Lalong also said that VAT is not production tax and that um, there's also a confusion regarding the overall effect of tax and that when people have been saying, oh, southern states generate so much and the northern states generate little and get, get a lot, he's explaining that the reason for this is that Lagos accounts for over 50% of VAT collection because most telecommunication companies, banks, manufacturing and other trading activities have their headquarters in Lagos and that's the simple reason why. You know, he also mentioned that unless the Supreme Court um, pronounces judgment on this substantive matter between the River State Government and the Federal Government, the matter is subjudiced and that the Northern State government, Governors Forum would respect that. So it's basically now two sides, Northern Governors on VAT and zoning, as well as, an, as the Southern Governors on VAT and zoning. That's our game. Uh, well, so you know, I've, I've always not, um, I've always wanted, you know, the conversation on value added tax to not be a north versus south thing. You know, it's really about the viability of states, and that's really where the conversation should be. But unfortunately, with Nigerian politics, they always would bring in the, you know, regional, you know, angles to some of all of these things that really should be about viability of states. Sadly, a lot of these northern states really are not viable. If we're being honest with ourselves. And, you know, with regards to creating value, um, you know, a lot of them have not been able to also understand that it is about the value you've been able to create in your state that should increase the amount of value added tax that, um, you know, you, you pay. And, you know, the argument that, you know, there'll be multiple taxation really doesn't work. But, of course, they will put all those things forward to, you know, um, create, you know, um, you know, a narrative, you know, for their stance. Um, I would move away from value added tax. I think we've spoken about that too much. The... A conversation concerning North 
uh, versus South with regards, um, you know, zoning. I've said it over and over that politics really has always been a game of interest and not just here in Nigeria. And so the Northern governors and whoever else, you know, is taking a stance based on their own interests and what they think that they would benefit. Um, a few years ago, these same people would have said, oh, it's time for the North to rule. But now that it seems like that may not be coming their way anymore, you know, they obviously would take a totally different stance, a totally different narrative. A lot of those people who are having this argument, you know, would have argued uh, a few years ago, 2019, 2015, that it was time for the North. But now they suddenly do not agree that it has anything to do with zoning or have anything to do with federal character. It is now based on what the Constitution says. Um, which, of course, you know, you can basically read between the lines and see the reasons they are putting out these um, narratives. Um, it's always about interest and what they think they can benefit. Sadly, there are, you know, some PDP governors in, you know, these uh, northern, I think the, the northern states have about five PDP governors. The, you know, majority of PDP governors are in the south and they've not been able to convince their PDP governors in the north to, you know, take a totally different stance. So you think so it should, it should, they should be aligned along um, the lines of their party? Yeah, it, it would eventually fall down to parties. And, you know, and, and it's one thing that you've seen lately that people have, you know, most of the comments that I've seen, a lot of people would say that they don't care what political party it is. You know, as long as that uh, the candidate is from the South, that's where they are voting. And that's most of the narrative that, that I've seen on social media. They're voting any candidate from the South, um, regardless of what, what political party. And if the PDP decides to pick a Northern candidate, they've lost their vote. I've, I've seen those comments come, you know, every now and then. Um, but that's, you know, a, a, a new angle to it. The big question for me, really, and I think that's what everyone should be really focused on is, why is there that seeming phobia for a northern candidate in 2023? And I feel it's really because of the way the last eight years, well, in 2023, has been run. And the way President Muhammadu Buhari has, you know, run the country in the last eight you know, years, in 2023, eight years. Um, and that's really where all these conversations are coming from. And there's a little phobia. There's a lot of people who already think... They don't want to take that risk again with putting someone from the north there. And it's not because, you know, every candidate from the north is bad or would be terrible for Nigeria. Because we've had, um, you know, a lot of northern uh, presidents. We've had Yaradua there before. And, you know, it, it was a totally different energy. But the way that the current administration has run Nigeria, that's where all this energy is coming from and this phobia is coming from. And now northern governors suddenly remember that there is a constitution mm. and it has to do with 25% and whatnot, you mm -hmm. know, that they're saying. But most of the conversations, you know, that I have seen have said simply that whoever it is that presents a southern candidate, that's who they are voting for. They don't care what party it is. Um, you know, I've, I've also seen people who say that they don't, you know, the APC will never get their votes regardless of whether it's a north or west mm. or east or, or middle belt candidate that they put forward. But um, that's where all these conversations coming from. The northern governors also finally should realize that the most important thing, the place, the same place that they had this meeting yesterday in Kaduna, lost about 50 lives in the last 48 hours to, you know, banditry and, 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 and I'm sorry, uh, Boko Haram and whatever. You know, there's videos and pictures of people who have murdered dozens of people. That same state is where they're having discussions on, you know, whether it's a northern candidate or southern mm. candidate in 2023. What is most important to the Kaduna State Governor now should be Bethel High School. It should be the people who have been killed in his state. It should be protecting life and property in his state. And that should be um, the only thing of utmost importance, not whether, you know, not who is going to be uh, running for president in 2023. Hmm. Interesting angles there. Looking forward to, you know, talk more about this with some political and economic experts later on at the breakfast. We have a track for you there. Let's, um, let's take a look. With a view to promoting unity and peace in the nation, notwithstanding their comments, the forum unanimously condemned the statement by the Southern Governors Forum that the presidency must go to the South. The statement is quite contradictory with the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, that the elected president shall score the majority vote, he score at least 25% of the votes cast in two third states of the Federation. C. In the case of run of simple majority win the election will win the election. The Northern State Governors Forum considered the ongoing national debate on collection of value added tax VAT. As responsible leaders, while we are concerned by the fact that the matter is subsidies, we however for the purposes of educating the public make the following observations. A the judgment of the Federal High Court calls to question 
the constitutionality of VAT, withholding tax, education tax, Niger Delta Development Commission, National Information Technology Development Agency, 13% derivation, National Economic Development Council, and many other currently levied and collected by the Federal Government of Nigeria and the Federal Inland Revenue Service. B. Rivers and Lagos State Government had enacted their own VAT laws, and the Southern Governors Forum has, have expressed support for this course of action. C. VAT is being confused by these state governments as a sales tax. If every state enacted its own VAT law, multiple taxation will result in increase of prices of goods and services and collapse in interstate trade. VAT is not a production tax like ex excise, but terminal tax which is paid by the ultimate consumer. Oh, well, uh, just uh, quick uh, clips from the Northern Governors meeting yesterday. And of course, uh, we have a, you know, a extensive discussion about this sometime during the show this morning. So stay with us and we will look deeper into some of those uh, details. And next to our, uh, our next top trending story, the United Kingdom currently is facing labor shortages in the haulage and food industry. So they're basically saying that these challenges have been caused by the COVID-19 pandemic concerns with Brexit and an aging population. So right now, um, the UK says, um, this is definitely from a logistics company in the UK, that the UK needs about 90,000 truck drivers. And just on the back of that, to solve these challenges regarding um, the delivery of fuel products and goods as well, the United Kingdom has launched a special work visa, and that's for immigrants, lorry drivers, and farmers, as well as poultry workers in the country. So, I mean, that really is the gist of it. The United Kingdom right now is facing challenges. They need drivers. They need poultry workers. They need farmers. And they're saying, let's solve this by opening our borders and let people from Nigeria and other countries come in. You will get visas um, to work in the UK for three months. And that visa would expire by the eve of Christmas. So lots of Nigerians really have been talking about this on social media, saying, rather than spend all my time in class, reading and reading and having a first class and now I have no job. I should have spent my time learning how to drive a truck. I would have gone to the UK, make so much money, come back there to Naira and you're a rich man by Christmas. Yeah. Um, and, you know, besides the, I think the lack of uh, truck drivers has also created a, a petrol scarcity in the UK also. It's, it's not very... Uh, familiar pictures that we've seen or videos that we've seen, you know, with cute petrol fuel. There's actually no the fuel UK. scarcity, according to the news. There is fuel. I mean, what, what I've seen well, on our channel is the fact that they do not have enough drivers to actually drive. No, there's, there's no fuel scarcity. There is fuel. It is the drivers who should, you know, make that delivery. So there's a difference. The, the, the problem is with the distribution, not with the availability of fuel. I, I don't know if you get that correct. So there's... Fuel, but there's no fuel in it. Yes, there's, an, there's a problem with di distribution, not with the availability of fuel. Great, but yeah. there's fuel, but there's no fuel in the station. So there's a scarcity in stations, right? Sergey, however, you want it's to interpret it. It's the same it. thing when <laughs> it's Itman goes thing. on strike <laughs> in Nigeria, or Pengasan goes thing. on strike, it's and they the say, thing. oh, truck drivers in Nigeria on strike, and there's petrol scarcity. So it's the same thing. I'm saying the lack of drivers, if that's drivers how you want to say it, that's fine. The lack of truck drivers has created a false scarcity in the UK. It's not because, of course, I know that there's where petrol. Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, focus really is immigration to the UK and, mm -hmm. you know, what not. visas, and, yes. Yes, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, blame any Nigerian who decides to leave whatever job that they've been doing here, you know, and move to the UK. <laughs> I think the focus for many people who are moving there, of course, a lot of, those, a lot of them can drive trucks. But a lot, a, Can they even afford them, the flight tickets? That's another yeah, question. Yeah, so, well, you'll figure it out. You know, you'll find, find a way around it. You Use know, money and, to and make money. That. I, I think I spoke this, uh, about this yesterday or two days ago, that the um, wave, they call it the Jackpa wave, that is currently going on in Nigeria, um, very likely has not been witnessed in a very, very long time. Maybe, you know, during Abacha's time or, you know, President Buhari's time, when he was military inspector in, you know, in the 80s. Those are the only two times that we've seen these number of Nigerians leaving the country in droves, you know, and I'm not talking about just doctors now. I'm talking about people who have every skill whatsoever. If you go online, you know, go, go on, you know, social media, you would see, just search for the hashtag, goodbye Nigeria. There's so many. <laughs> 
And, you know, they are all moving to Finland, to Switzerland, Australia, UK, Canada, wherever it is, um, to find greener pastures. Um, they are not 100% sure what it exactly would be like, but at least it gives them a chance of, you know, some hope that things will be better when they get there. So, um, yes, the UK would have its own struggles. Um, and, you know, somehow, somewhere, I'm sure the government will be able to balance things out. They would also have to find their footing again after Brexit. They would have to, you know, renegotiate a lot of, you know, decisions that they've taken, I, I believe. Um, but, you know, it will, you know, and I'm sure that they will be able to populate. They're talking about 10,000 and even more truck drivers and drivers in every other, you know, uh, manual space like that. So they would be able to fill up that space. There's many, 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 many people from different countries that are trying to get into the UK. Hmm. Um, I just don't know what happens next. And like you said, the, the visa expires, you know, in just before Christmas. Um, I don't know what happens next, if most of those people will come back or not, um, or they would be there. But, and, but, uh, but we know that the UK would definitely take serious measures to make sure these people are properly documented yeah. and they can find and tra tra track them. But we know Nigerians and we know people who have even gone to the Olympics and never came back. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's been stories like that. So it just means that um, with these tens of thousands of, of Nigerians and other um, immigrants who will be coming into the UK, not all of them might come back at the eve well, of Christmas. No, I'm sure they're, they're well. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting time across the world, you mm. know, and you know, I'm, I'm sure that the United Kingdom itself will be able to figure this out. You know, and it's also a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, let's also quickly note that it's not just drug drivers. You know, there is many fields, um, even in healthcare, that are seriously lacking in the UK that will be populated. I saw a picture um, two days ago, I think on Twitter, where a person said, um, took a picture, you know, in a healthcare facility in the UK that mm -hmm. had about seven Nigerian nurses um, that had moved in wow. sometime this year, wow. yes, and they were all working. Um, and he himself was surrounded by all seven of them. So it's, 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 a, it's an interesting time to see how much people would um, take advantage of this time and relocate and leave Nigeria. Hmm. So our next top trending story, um, you know, goes back to what I mentioned earlier, you know, the fact that lots of women really have seen what's happened um, in the U.S. right now as a victory regarding justice. Um, Ari Kelly, R&B singer, has been facing charges of, you know, sexual assault, sex trafficking, racketeering and all of that. And yesterday, after about a nine-hour debate, jurors said they found him guilty of one count of racketeering and about eight counts, you know, of violating the Man Act, which is an act in the U.S., that's against sex um, trafficking. So they basically said that um, Arakali was found guilty of running an enterprise through which he exploited his power and his time to prey on underage girls, young women, and at least two male victims. Um, he's, he should be sentenced by May 4th, 2022. And um, the U.S. attorney in, in the District of New York said that um, the verdict of yesterday forever brands Ari Kelly as a predator who used his fame and his fortune to, pe to prey on the young, on the vulnerable, and on the voiceless for his own sexual gratification. They basically went on and on to say that he ensnared girls in a web of sex, abuse, exploitation, and humiliation, and commended the girls for their bravery in coming out to speak you know, about this and to share their stories. Even though at first, you know, people didn't believe some of these girls when you came out to say Ari Kelly sexually harassed them or all of that. But finally, years later, it's all been brought to the table and Ari Kelly has been found guilty of sex trafficking. Good luck to him. His lawyer um, in an interview yesterday was saying that he was going to appeal. Um, you know, but I, I don't think he, there's any way on earth, except maybe true, maybe death is the only way that Ari Kelly will you know, evade jail. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very, I'm talking about jail for a very, very long time, if not, if not life imprisonment, but jail for at least 30, 50 years. Um, there's no way that he's going to evade any of that because, of course, the, he has court cases in many other states, not just, you know, the one that we're speaking about now. There's other states that he's been accused of the same, you know, similar crimes. Um, and, you know, I think we've said it here before that, you know, no matter how big or how popular you are, it's just one tiny mistake here, that when you lose control of yourself, that eventually ruins that career. Um, pretty much the same thing almost happened to Bill Cosby, but obviously there's a very, very far cry from the Bill Cosby case, you know, to our, the Eric Kelly case. Eric Kelly's case is, you know, con is concerning dozens of girls, you know, from, you know, when he was just a rising, you know, star back then. Um, and you, like you mentioned, is it also includes uh, males. Um, and so he basically ran a very, very dirty, dirty, dirty life as a career, an abusive <laughs> life as a, as a superstar. 
um, there's no difference really between him and um, uh, Epstein, <laughs> what's his name, the, uh, the Jeffrey Epstein, yeah. Um, really not different, the only difference is that one is white and one is black. But he really will never in any way evade jail. And, it, and yeah. it's, it's definitely victory for every person who, who um, had to suffer you know, from his atrocities. And Aliyah himself, herself, who was one of the most popular also, who, mm -hmm. who he, he got married to when she was just 15. And so they were very likely already, um, he was abusing her sexually, you know, um, and ev eventually got to marry her at that age. Falsified records, bribed some officials to, and, and, you know, to get her married at that age. So good luck to him. He's going to be somebody's wife in jail, obviously. You should enjoy it. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Wicked. All right, those are our top trending stories this morning. And we'll take a break here and return with Off the Press. Um, um, across the papers, we're seeing the issue between the North and South regarding the power shift for 2023. More on that after the break.